Paul, so glad that you've decided to join us here on this Pentecost Sunday. That means our Easter celebration is done. Not entirely. Today is really the good cap of the Easter season, I guess you would say. It caps it all off. It reminds us of exactly why Jesus Christ came. As a baby born in Bethlehem, which we celebrate on December 25th, well, this is the reason why. He came to love us, to die for us, and then gift us with his Holy Spirit. And so we celebrate that today. Never fear, every day in the life of a Christian is a mini day of resurrection. We celebrate the good news of Jesus Christ. We also celebrate the good news of this gift of the Holy Spirit. Maybe you don't know what the Holy Spirit is. However, you believe in Jesus Christ, you have the gift of the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk a little bit about that today later in our service for today. Just a couple of announcements before I begin. I am depending upon you because today we are going to do our full liturgy. I do not have an assistant today. How are we going to do that? Well, I'm depending upon you to download the page that has the hymns on it. And the, the, the songs, I should say, that we're going to be singing. Now, two of the songs I will put up on the board back here, but there are two I'm going to have my hands full with the guitar. There's no way I'm going to be able to obviously control the screen, but I think these are really important songs, and I'd like you to download those song sheets and sing along with us. If you didn't have the time to do that, just do the best job that you can. Just hum along with us. That's fantastic. I hope you'll enjoy those as well, too. All right, next week is... Uh, the name of our church, Holy Trinity Sunday. And so we look forward to celebrating Holy Trinity Sunday with you. We will again have a fantastic service online for you. And just ask God's blessing on you. Today, if you are able to be with us for our in-person worship service, we actually have new members joining our congregation today. We're really excited about that. That will take place at our 1045 service. So wherever you may be, if you're in the Pittsburgh area, you want to come and celebrate the new members that we are adding to the congregation. I think you can actually watch the service at 9 o'clock and still make it down here by 1045 to witness that fantastic event and that commitment, their commitment to the church, but also our commitment to them. It's really important that we do that as a congregation. All right, so with that in mind, I would like us to begin our worship service today. We are going to start with our confession and our forgiveness. Once again, because I am by myself, a lot of these things, I will be seated over here for that. I hope that is not too much of a distraction for you, but I really want to include our entire liturgy for this service. It is an important holiday of the church year, and we celebrate this day of the giving of the Holy Spirit, the day of Pentecost. We prepare our hearts by making confession before the Lord. Our Lord God has richly blessed us, though we were yet sinners. Out of gratitude for God's blessings, we come to repentance as a sign of our appreciation for God's grace. Let us also repent because of our desire to please the one who loved us so much that he would rather die for us than live without us. Hear the words of St. Paul, who reminds us that it is by grace that we are saved through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast. All who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. Thanks be to God. Let us sing our opening hymn today, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us read responsively our reading for today, the reading of the season of Pentecost. In the last days it will be, God declares, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. I invite you to take your hand out. And I hope you download it for today's service. Spirit of God, descend upon my people. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones. Your spirit brings us truth, brings your truth into this world. Send us this Holy Spirit to transform us by your truth this day. Give us language to proclaim your gospel through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forevermore. Our first lesson for today is found in the book of Acts, the second chapter. This is that beautiful and famous passage that we read every single Pentecost. A reminder of the gift of the Holy Spirit that Jesus promised his disciples in that upper room on the day of the resurrection. So when the day of Pentecost had come, by the way, Pentecost is the word 50 
in Greek. So now you know a Greek word. 50 days after the resurrection of our Lord. Huh. I hope that's an enlightenment for you, for those who are not aware of that. So, when the day of Pentecost had come, they, the disciples, were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared amongst them, and a tongue rested on each one of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under the heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered, and they were bewildered, because each one of them heard them speaking in the native language of each. Now, amazed and astonished, they said, Are not these all speaking to us Galileans? How is it that we hear each in our own native languages? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and they were perplexed. They said to one another, What does this mean? The other sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. Peter stood amongst the eleven and raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea, all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I am about to say to you. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon the flesh, all flesh. Your sons, your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days, I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. I will show portents in the heavens above and signs in the earth below, blood, fire, smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here ends the lesson. Let us read responsibly from Psalm 104. Again, as I raise my hand, that will be your indication. That is your opportunity to respond with every other even frame. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom, you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide, creeping things, innumerable are there, living things both small and great. There go the ships and Leviathan that you formed to sport in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. Then you give it to them. They gather it up. When you open up your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. And you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works, who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Blessed be the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord.
Our gospel lesson for this day of Pentecost is found in the book of John, or the book of John, pardon me, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father. We will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? That the words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father dwells in me does, and does his works. Believe in me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not then believe because of the works themselves, truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do works greater than I do. And in fact, I will do greater works than these, because I'm going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified. If in my name you ask for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will ask the Father, he will give you another advocate, to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him, nor does it know him. You know him because he abides in you, and he will be in you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Now, my Father, what joy it is to celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit, the birth of your church, the new life that you've gifted to each one of us. We give thanks for this gift today and pray your blessing to be upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. There is a handout that is you are welcome to download along with the song sheet for today. It is on, entitled, You Are Who God Says You Are. Boy, that's a, that's a good phrase to riff on right now. It's a reminder because I tell you, the world wants to tell you who you are. They want to tell you you're no good, you're worthless, you're a bum, you're a failure. Because you didn't live up to expectations. All those expectations you had since it's graduation season, all those expectations that you had when you were a teenager, an 18-year-old, and you graduated from high school, and the entire world was open to you, you were so excited about what your future would be. Can you really evaluate your life and say, did I actually live up to that? Who does? We're so excited filled with anticipation, and the world just has a way of just ripping that from us, doesn't it? And so we live our lives in a defeated manner, at some point recognizing, I will never live up to all of those expectations. But I'm going to tell you, don't believe that lie. You are who God tells you you are, not what the world tells you you are, not those inner voices that go through your head that say, I'm stupid, I'm an idiot. You know, those were words that were beaten to me when I was younger by my stepfather. You're stupid, you're an idiot, you're a dummy, you're no good, you're worthless. And those things just keep being repeated over and over. I do the devil's work because those phrases go through my brain. No good. Oh, you really failed. You're so stupid. That's what my stepfather, he takes up residence right here in my brain and I allow it for free. Right? That's not who I am. I am who God says I am. I am who God says I am. Who does God say I am? I'm the child of God, an heir of the kingdom of heaven because of what Jesus Christ has done. I am heavenly royalty who's been gifted with the Holy Spirit. I am not what the world has told me I am. You are not who the world has told you you are. You are who God says you are. You are the child of God, a prince in the kingdom of heaven an heir of what is to come. That's who you are. 
to get us through these difficult days when we live in a world that wants to rip us down. God has blessed us with a gift, the Holy Spirit. This Holy Spirit reminds us of who we are when these thoughts start banging through our head, when the world wants to throw in her face all of our failures, the Holy Spirit enters in and says, that's not who you are. You are who Jesus says you are. See, the Spirit is God's gift to sustain us, to get us through this life with our heads held high, without being bitter, without being defeated, because this world is tough. It can be a challenge and a handful. Very few people ever achieve what they dream and hope of in this world. Honestly, sometimes it's because people are attacking you and trying to take from you what you have. More often it's just that we're seven and a half billion people on the planet crashing into each other and one person wants the thing that you want and they get it before you or somehow are more capable of it or maybe they're more fortunate in a position where they can get it and you're left with nothing. Well, that person who got the thing that you wanted at some point is going to be on the other side of that and we all end up disappointed sometimes. What does the Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit reminds us that we are not the sum of our materialistic possessions. That we are not defined by the things we have or have not done in life. We are not defined by the job that we just got fired from. We are children of the Most High God. Heirs of the Kingdom of Heaven. Royalty because of the gift of Jesus Christ. So I am praying for the Holy Spirit to fall upon you today so you don't believe that lie or those thoughts that are going through your head. You are who God says you are. And don't you ever forget it. <laughs> you can take this sermon hand out and throw it away. I just want God's blessing on you today. I want you to be at peace. For God has told you who you are today. May the Spirit walk with you and remind you, child of God, heir of the kingdom, royalty, and the kingdom to come. That is who Jesus says you are. May the Spirit sustain you in this life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks again for the Holy Spirit, for the gift of God that has been showered upon us this day. We indeed are children of God, heavenly royalty, heirs of the kingdom of heaven. We pray for your spirit to be with us so that we are reminded of this, the claim that you have upon our lives. We give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to pull out your hand out for today. On the hands, and we're going to say, blessed assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine.
God has made us his people through the claim of Jesus Christ upon our lives, the gift of holy baptism, the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. We are going to take this opportunity to make confession before our Lord in affirmation of the claim of God this day. Usually, again, we would have in our bulletins the liturgy for that. Do not fret, do not panic, do not fear. You don't need the words for this. But I am asking you, since God has made a claim on your life, you've been blessed by that claim, to respond to that claim with an affirmation of your love for him. Water is a sign of God's gift of love for us. This simple element, this basic element of life, gifts us with life. It is also a gift that can kill us. Well, that is also bound up in the covenant of baptism. God wants to kill us to sin and raise us up to newness of life. Therefore, I ask you, church, to confess your faith in Jesus Christ to reject sin and confess the faith of the Holy Church. Do you, people of God, renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, answer by saying, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you, people of God, renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? If so, say, I, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that would draw you away from God? If so, answer by saying, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? Confess the first article of the Creed with me. Maybe you don't remember what it is, but I think you know most of these words by now. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in God the Son? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. My brothers and sisters, you have made a public affirmation of the claim that God has placed upon your life this day. I'm asking you the following questions. Do you intend to continue in the covenant that God has made with you in holy baptism by living amongst God's faithful people? By hearing the word of God and sharing in the Lord's Supper? By proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ through both word and deed? And to serve all people following the example of Jesus Christ, striving for justice and for peace in all the earth? If so, we answer by saying, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support one another, to pray for one another in your walk and in your life in Jesus Christ? If so, answer, we do. And we ask God to help and guide us. We do. And we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through this water, and the Holy Spirit, you have gifted us with new birth. Cleanse us this day from sin. Raise us to eternal life. Stir up in your people the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forevermore. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'm inviting God's blessing to be upon your hearts this day. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are going to depart this place today in peace with a song on our lips, another great song of this Pentecost season. Oh, for a thousand tongues to say. Peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, all the fortress, yeah, blow me the night. I'm an heir of salvation.